so today uh, we will we are going to in fact start with uh, or we will start to look at uh, process variations we will also talk about projects and if time permits we will also probably talk about you know start with power dissipation and power estimation methods so until now what you looked at is delay estimation methods am i right logical effort and all the delay models everything elmo delay everything was delay estimation hmm? so we have also looked at stick diagrams but stick diagrams do not give a very clear view of uh, area yet it it does give you some sense but not really a very clear view because the concept of width is not there in the stick diagrams so you will get the concept of area when you will work on your projects uh, you already done assignments in which you have drawn in, in which you have drawn layout so you have some sense of how area is uh, you know impacted when you change the size of devices and uh, power is something that we will start next okay and uh, after that we will go into different circuit design styles static cmos pseudo cmos uh, pseudo pseudo nmos dynamic logic and so on so we we'll look into various design styles for combinational circuit design after that we will look at uh, sequential circuit design and uh, then we will sign off you know the scores and like i'm just giving you an overall uh, you know a, a quick overview of what to expect in the second part of this course so later part we will sign off with uh, some uh, arithmetic circuits like adders multipliers and uh, also memories okay so a quick glimpse of memories also will be there towards the end of this course okay so today we will start to look at uh, parametric variations or process variations uh, we will have a quick glimpse of why they happen and uh, which we have already discussed so we'll move quickly around that then we will go go to the projects part and then we'll start the power dissipation aspect so we designed a inverter such that this black line hmm, the black line now the jam overlaying with red now hmm, we designed an uh, so uh, how do i remove this i can simply remove this so we designed an inverter with this nominal curve of black line but if the pmos is designed is faster than what we had anticipated or the nmos is worse than what we had anticipated then the curve would move to this side on the other hand if the nmos is better than what we had anticipated and pmos is worse than what we had anticipated the curve would move to that side to the left side it is almost like you have changed the beta ratio of your design am i right if you change the beta ratio curve would move on move on left to right stuff like that you remember yes sir yes sir yeah so uh, if it so happens that pmos is manufactured fast or nmos is manufactured slow then the curve would move to right because it appears to the uh, you know in the uh, in the kirchhoff's law equation where we or how we determine the transfer characteristics of an inverter we see that pmos will now drive more current and therefore the curve would move to the right it, the output would stay one for a longer period of time hmm? but why is this happening how do we have a good pmos and a bad nmos or a good nmos and a bad pmos hmm how do we get that and why do we get that may be it might be due to the manufacturing process yes it is due to manufacturing process ranjit so so yes raga so like you are saying that if the curve is moving to the right or left it means the beta ratio is basically changing sort of so but beta ratio in uh, is related to the physical property physical characteristics okay so i mean so basically we are saying that whatever it is happening it is due to the physical at that when the physical device is getting manufactured at that time something is happening which is leading to this kind of yeah of so the behavior you can say electrical beta ratio is changing would that so, be okay so electrical beta ratio what i'm what what the term would be 
yeah electrical beta, beta ratio can be considered as the on current of the n mos upon on current of the p mos okay 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 because if you have to equate them that is how you will come to the physical w by l beta ratio is it not uh yes sir and not but right now so, i'm only considering you, get, what... you, you arrive at any beta ratio so that you get some ratio between the on current of the p mos and the n mos is it not yeah yes sir. okay sir and that is the basis so we are talking about that basis that if the p mos current is more and the n mos current is lesser then it's almost like saying that the beta ratio of this device is such that p mos appears to be larger and n mos appears to be smaller okay okay sir it might be like uh, the doping of uh, p mos is much better than doping of n mos Uh, I mean, so okay, we are saying that doping could be one reason why this behavior can happen. Okay, great. What else? Uh, so ultimately, sir, we can say all these factors are leading to change in resistance of the devices. All which factors? Why factors? It so I am like, trying to find uh, out. Sir, uh, beta, okay, yeah. sir. Uh, yeah, beta. Resistance right. is. So beta ratio is a consequence of something. Sir, can we say uh, it is sir mobility width? Yeah, why would length, mobility change? Why would mobility change? No, sir. No, sir. Mobility. I I am saying that beta is consist of these parameters, but mobility no, no, no. will be. Oh, very good. So you are confusing between beta inside the model definition and beta ratio that we talk of as an inverter. They are two very different things. Be careful. Okay, sir. Okay. So the beta as in model definition is something different from the beta ratio that we were just talking about. Hmm. Sir, can this be due to variation in VT? Yes, we just said, na, it could be due to VT with doping variations. Doping variations will lead to VT variations. Yeah. Uh, in the chat window, someone is saying T ox variations. Okay, yes, T ox variations will also lead to something like VT variations. So VT variations, to... yes, definitely. So they are be... they are a direct impact on beta ratio, Faisal. Sir, so does it have to do something with the, the temperature? Temperature means. So means if the temperature varies, then the uh, like mobility of charge can vary. So yes, that will vary. Yeah. See, in this situation, when we are plotting them on the same graph, we are assuming over here that the voltage of operation and temperature remain same. Okay. But okay. even then, something has happened. Yes. Okay. We are looking at why all those things could happen. So yes, you know, uh, for example, if there is a variation in T ox. that could be because of different duration for which toxide was grown if there was a is there is a variation in doping it could be because of a, a slightly different duration for which uh, phosphine was run over the wafer for example so that phosphorus doping would be different so it could be because of all these little little variations that can happen in the manufacturing process so have we done this exercise in the class already where i asked you to Uh, write something ten times on a piece of paper. Have we done that exercise? Yes, yes. sir. So you know that they will when in a manufacturing process there can anyways be some variations that can happen. However controlled, however well controlled the process would be, there would still be some variations, and they lead to what we call as device variations, and these device variations and then modeled. into what is called as process lots these variations are due to as we just said uh, vt oxide of an uh, oxide thickness of nmos and pmos effective length effective width and so on so what we say is that we had targeted to make a particular device we call that typical this was the device that we wanted to make okay the center one but then what happened when i was uh, let us say doping for the n mos then it happened in such a way that my device for the n mos side would go towards fast so this this dot started to move towards right huh? so n mos doping was such that the device would go to fast then when i was do doing doping for the p mos then again it was such that the device would go towards fast let us say so it would go up so i reached this particular place which is called as ff 
which is fast NMOS, fast PMOS. However, if while doping for the PMOS, uh, the doping went towards slow side for the PMOS, I would go here. And I would arrive at a lot which is called as fast NMOS, slow PMOS, FS. Also written as SNSP for more clarity. Okay, NMOS is fast, PMOS is slow. But typically, if you say FS, then people assume that NMOS is being talked about first. Okay, but you can always write it in FNSP format so that it is more clear to anyone there. Okay, so now let us say that uh, not just so we said that uh, the doping for NMOS was towards fast, doping for PMOS was also towards fast. So I reached here. Now we say that the etching of the poly when we were defining the gates, that also happened for a few milliseconds more. So what happened? Both NMOS and PMOS became a little faster. Then we say that the oxide thickness was also grown for a slightly lesser time. So again, both NMOS and PMOS became faster and we essentially moved from somewhere over here to this point where all the variations are then over, overlaid over one over another and we arrived at the fast, fast lot. So you would add variations, come here, then add stuff and come somewhere here. Okay. Uh, are you getting the sense? There are some variations which are correlated and some variations which are independent. For example, NMOS and PMOS dopings happen in different steps. So they are independent. NMOS can be doped more and PMOS can be doped less. But some variations like length and T oxide thickness, they would be similar for both NMOS and PMOS. Are you with me on this? Any questions? So if the uh, body is etched more, then it will lead to slower side, right? Or the faster side? Why is the poly is etched more than the length is shorter? If the length is shorter, so in the IDS current equation, if we just go to that equation for once, uh, how does the length appear in the equation? W but by L. So, but like you said, na, ki, uh, that uh, diffusion areas would be fixed for us uh, when the mass will be, will be made. So if, we, if the poly is etched more, then we will not even get the gate itself. No, sorry, the right, uh, the so, uh, even before we enter into this uh, this business of how the drain uh, drain uh, what do you say capacitance etc would come into picture, we had this lecture on manufacturing process. Yes. What sir. was the sequence of manufacturing steps? I mean, yes, sir. So first we decide deposit the poly, then we do diffusion area. So, but like even before we are going towards the poly, the mass that according to which the diffusion is happening, they are they have been already manufactured. So if the poly is more, no. the device will itself won't be manufactured basically. So let us review that once. How do you make diffusion region in your layouts? Yes, sir. This now? Yes, sir. Yes. And then you make then you make poly. Yeah. Yes, sir. So diffusion mask is this, is it not? Yes, sir. So now if the poly length has reduced, what happens? The drain will form, it will still form along the gate. Yeah. yeah so yes, this yes. process is called as self-aligned gate. And it's a very powerful process because then whatever variations happen to the length, the poly may shift this side, that side, whatever happens, my transistor action will not be impacted. My source and drain will be aligned to the gate at all times. Do you see that? Hello? Uh, sir, sir, can you please repeat this, sir? I do not understand. So, you tell me, what is the process of manufacturing? What are the steps how we manufacture a, a transistor? Uh, so first we'll have the substrate, then uh, uh, we will uh, introduce the end well. After that, uh, we will uh, 
deposit the uh, field oxide along with the gate oxide and then we do the etching uh, post that uh, we do our implantation and uh, after that um, after the implantation then yeah we we make the contact windows and then uh, post that uh, we will deposit the metal what about the gate when will the gate come oh sorry sir after after the uh, depositing the gate oxide we deposit the polysilicon okay so when we deposit the polysilicon then we etch the polysilicon yes. after that we will etch the polysilicon yes so that is when the gate is formed yes hmm? and now after you have etched the polysilicon and you have etched the gate oxide in regions where there was no polysilicon you will yes. now do the implant so that source and drain regions are formed yes so at all times gate will always be in touch with source and drain uh, yes sir hmm? now if the sequence of designing source and drain was such that i would make source and drain first and then deposit poly something like this can happen do you see mm -hmm. yes sir and this the transistor action will not happen or yes something like this can also happen i just yes, you know the poly mass just got shifted by a few nanometers mm. again transistor action would not happen yes sir but in the process that we are using the process is we will deposit the poly first yes and then we will deposit the implants for source and drain yes so transistor action will always happen okay and this is what is called as self aligned gate okay understood sir thank you sir. okay you will have to give me a minute my ppt kind of crashed so any other questions around this is this part clear about the self aligned poly and stuff uh, excuse me sir yes so sir the self aligned gate is a property of the actual process itself it's not of the manufacturing process yes okay so like once we realize that our uh, uh, poly itself has shifted uh, here and there we can just realign the entire deposition process it will automatically get realigned okay okay the way we define the process do you see it will automatically get redefined no yes sir okay hmm? are you able to see this so what are we talking about we are saying that i will deposit the gate first now let us say the original position of gate was this but i deposited gate a little to the left after i have deposited the gate i will do the implant for source and drain so what happens now the implant for source and drain happens like this i still have source and drain there which are connected so the transistor action will still happen in this region even if my poly got misaligned 